welcome to another radio unboxing slash review video here on Andy's Randomness. In front of us, we have the Midland ER10 VP. This is officially, hopefully, going to be my replacement for the CC Pocket because as many of you know, I'm still thinking about one more radio I want to get this year with RDS. But in the meantime, I had to come up with something that would be doable for the time being. So here it is. If you would like to purchase this radio on Amazon, the link will be in the description below. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you can get next day delivery. Proof in the Prime packaging right here. So, without further ado, I'm going to try to unbox this. Before we continue, I just want to mention, I should have said this earlier. The price on Amazon when I purchased this was a total of $24.99 plus sales tax came out to around $27. So, I want to mention these, it came with stickers, but uh, a little flimsy, but maybe putting the batteries in might, um, might help it. So, I'd be like to do in the weather band community. We need to push every button to wish it good luck. So, keep it flat. <laughs> Here we go. So, not that many buttons to push. Oh, where's the volume? Oh, right. That was the volume. What am I doing? <laughs> okay. So, supposedly, it comes with... What are these double A batteries? So, can we get them out? Oh, they might be in here. Yeah, let's let's get them out. All right, so this is how you put the battery compartment in. And here we are. So, nothing too impressive about it. It's just basic, and that's what I was looking for. Now, everybody complains that, oh, there's no backlight. And the other Midland cranks have them, but, you know, I'm not looking for that, guys, because the other Midlands, they have this really annoying dog whistle, as they call it. And, yeah, pretty much I didn't want to bother my parents, nor the windows open my neighbors with it. So, not to mention my uh, neighbors do have a beautiful gorgeous alaskan husky who barks all the time but it's a it's a cute bark it's not annoying but in any regard so now i gotta figure out how to set the time on this that is a good question okay so there is a 12 hour which is good ah okay perfect i guess you have to hit the tune button because right now it is 1.32 p.m. I guess I gotta fix that. So I put it on a.m. accident. Okay, so now I just gotta fix that. Okay. Now I'll set it for 1.32 p.m. Yeah, I would prefer frequency. Yeah. Okay, so I guess what we need to do is show you the flashlight feature. So there's the flashlight, and it's pretty bright. I gotta say, whoa, and there's even a high beam. It even blinks like an SOS. Pretty cool if you uh, ask me on that. So I guess now what I want to do is just go to the, um, turn it on, see what, it, see what I can do with it. And nothing too impressive about it. So what I want to do right now is see if I can pick up KZC31 signal. So I'm going to work on that right now. Well, I didn't think that would uh, go very well. But I just checked Broadcastify and I just checked my DC Skywave. KZC31 is temporarily off the air. 
So I'll probably have to record another clip later on getting it in action because from what Totterbert was mentioning with this model, he was saying that this is a good radio for DXing weather stations despite the antenna being a little small. But again, Midlands are always known for their quality when it comes to weather band reception. So at least the good news is, as I'm recording this video, KWO 35 is on the air. So thank goodness. At least we have a working weather station we can try it with. Yeah, this is how you turn it on, I think. Still learning. In the lower 50s, south winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that's pretty cool, Friday, guys. Mostly sunny. So I think what we're going to do right now, um, I heard this radio doesn't do very well when it comes to DXing on the AM, but that's not what I was really looking for this radio to do. I was looking for a portable that can, you know, pick up my local AMs and, yeah, see, I'm not going to pick up that station. I don't think I'm going to pick up WMTR signal. But that was expected. So what I want to do right now is, I guess, go down to um, AM600 just for the heck of it. Because I know that's another good station I can pick up during the daytime. Ooh, I can... Hear it faintly, but it's picking it up. Okay, so WICC's coming in. Not that bad. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, tonight's a good That's night for DXing anyway. Super Bowl, because I haven't been here in 55 years. I want to have that experience again. Get to Super Bowl. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm doing a demonstration when Joe right. Benigno is on. Oh, <laughs> What is a Vesper? A Vesper is two parts gin, one part vodka, half kilo roulette. I want to live. on the AM. <laughs> it's a lot of Let me try WOR. I know people still inside who tell me what's going on. And same thing with the FBI. I'm not as plugged in there, but similar stories. I know some FBI agents. So I, I, I think that people should know this, but yeah, it's, a, be it's a long-term problem we're trying to fix here. And you need someone, as I was saying, what was it? And you have it. Can I win that Super Bowl? Can I get there first? <laughs> I'm pre-planning. Oh, you're far. We're going there, okay. dude. We're going there. Oh, I hope you're right. <laughs> oh, it's live now? Okay. Oh, A little okay. poppy there. Mm. Uh, well, I guess I did kind of Maisie. I did. No, I didn't call her Crazy Maisie. That's what I call uh, the senator from Hawaii. She's Crazy Maisie, also known as Lazy Maisie. But she's a 75-year-old politician. Anyway, I'm sensing it's a little, little pop bit of hostility right from you, Russ. I don't know. I don't know. Keep going. No negative know. 70 to that, guys, but... Do you know the federal government has set aside billions of dollars for businesses to make claims for keeping their teams together during COVID? Even if you already received PPP money, call my friends at Lake Law Firm mm. at 800 the time to make a claim is now. That's one negative I'll say out of this. Kevin Rincon, here's what's happening. A body has been pulled from the Harlem River. Yeah, too much popping on AM. It's that of one of two missing boys who vanished from Harlem nearly a week ago. Wow, that's so unfortunate. Left partially paralyzed on the thigh has been released from a hospital. So as you can see here, you push the weather button, while the Department of and it does, in fact, yeah, it does work. At least for now, the Supreme Court says Andy Warhol infringed on the copyright of a photographer. Yeah, so... There's 90. Yeah, lemon head, which is sort of. Two, three, ten, ten wins. Anybody you want to shout out since you're on the radio? Oh. WXBK's coming in. Everything 
I'm gonna put the antenna out. Let's see. Okay, so WKJY is coming in. I'm Gemma Spegg, the host of The Psychology. When I put it like this, then I'll get WHUD signal. So that's be pretty good on FM. So... I guess I want to leave this at 92.3. And then I'll figure out what's going on with the AM popping. So, a couple other things I want to mention. For whatever reason, my AM stations make this weird popping noise. And, you know, I'm not really going to be using it for AM I don't see the need for that when I have other radios that can do the job a lot better. And if I were to use a radio in an emergency, um, I would prefer to use the... I would prefer to have this as a reference and just use my CC Skyway for AM. Because honestly, I just don't see myself dealing with the unbearable noise that this radio makes on AM. So, yeah. The good thing I will say right now, when the radio is off, it does go into alert mode. And when you turn it on, I'm going to hold the button here. Friday, south to southeast winds 5 to 15 knots. And look. Seas 3 to 4 feet. That's what I'm hoping Friday night, southeast when winds I get the weekly required knots, test. Becoming 10 to 20 knots. So, Seas three to six feet. Saturday, That's how I'm going to this video. 15 to 25 knots. Seas five to and nine. We're going to wait till Saturday I can night, get the WRT. Because south to south south this radio does make seas an interesting noise feet. when Sunday, there's a test. West winds ten to fifteen knots, diminishing to five to ten knots. The wind was variable at five. All right, so here we go. We got the signal for KZC thirty one. Found one good spot with my Sanji antenna hooked up here. So look at that. So last night, I just want to mention when I was doing it away from my camera, despite the AM crackling noise, and the other popping noise I'm hearing on AM. Surprisingly, there were two distant AM stations that came in pretty reliable last night. I was able to pick up WBZ from Boston, and I was able to pick up CFCM from Toronto. So not that bad. And I was even able to pick up one of my normal stations I get from North Carolina on AM 1110. So not that bad for 25 bucks if you want to deal with the AM popping. But again, I, I have better radios that sound 10 times better for the AM band than this. I mean, this is just only for, like I've been saying, if you want to use FM, you want to use the weather band, I, I highly recommend it for that reason. So, I just want to quickly acknowledge what I was able to do last night. Okay, there seems to be an issue with WNYZ FM on this radio. If Pulse 87 was still around and I wanted to listen, this would be a problem. Guys, this is terrible. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I'm just lucky. Ooh, wrong button. I'm just lucky that 1010 wins is on 92.3 FM. Because I, I would be out of luck right now. 
city also adding a new brand new a brand and new I gotta say Larry Mullen sounds pretty well Wall Street to Governor's Island battle run I'll give, on weekends I'll give the radio credit throughout the summer some people say well we're kind of spending all this money on the ferry yeah. nobody really riding them well the ferry reports about 15,000 so here's the Texan PL310 the audio sounds pretty low on the station. So this is just a comparison, guys. And obviously, I know if uh, Joy Jung, one of my uh, loyal viewers, um, I know, I don't know what made me do this, but there seems to be an audio issue overall and I was just experimenting with the batteries to see if the AM was working that's not the case guys so there you have it don't discredit the mid one you know or another faulty thing okay Upton good job you're actually a minute early there we go Service office at Brookhaven National Laboratory in up in New York. The preceding signal was a test of the NOAA All Hazards Radio Public Warning System on Station Co. 35 from New York City. During potentially dangerous weather situations, specially built receivers can be automatically activated by the signal to warn of the impending hazard. Tests of the signal and receiver performance are normally conducted by the National Weather Service at 11 a.m. each Wednesday. If there is a threat of severe weather, the test will be postponed to the next available good weather day. Reception of this broadcast, and especially the warning alarm, will vary at any given location. This variability, normally more noticeable at greater distances from the transmitter, can sometimes occur even though you are using a good quality receiver in good working order. To provide the most consistent and dependable warning service possible, the warning alarm will be activated for hazardous watches and warnings for the following counties in Southeast New York, Bronx, Kings, Nassau, New York, Orange, Putnam, Queens, Richmond, Rockland, Suffolk and Westchester, in Northern and Central New Jersey, Bergen, Essex, Hudson, Hunterdon, Middlesex, Monmouth, Morris, Passaic, Somerset, Sussex, Union and Warren, and in Southwest Connecticut, Fairfield. Once again, this was only a test. All right, there we go. The radio works. Live on Newsline. So, murder charges and is being held without bail. One thing I think I did mention this earlier in the video. You can't see it, but again, the weather mode will also go off, let's say, if you are on an AM or an FM station. And right now I'm playing 92.3. So it's still flashing the WX, which is... Actually, you guys can see it. See, there it is. There you go. So it does have the dog whistle, but, you know... I would be using this if this, you know, if this, if there was an emergency and I knew something was being issued for, let's say, New York City or Long Island and I'm checking IEM bot. That would be when I would turn on the siren and only for a weekly required test. That would really be it. So, there you have it. That is my complete review of the Midland ER 10 VP. I would say take your chances if you have patience and, you know, for my end, I think it gets the job done. So that's going to conclude my review of, again, the Midland ER-10 VP. I will have a link again in the description from Amazon if you want to purchase this for a total of $24.99 or if you want to made it out, Midland has a discount of $20. So I'll also leave the Midland link in the description below. So after that successful test, I decided it's official. I will be getting the Sanjian DT800, but... I have to get the black one because supposedly I heard the black one is a better model compared to the yellow one down here. I'll try to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so that's the goal right now. 
I want to try to get the black one. It's actually a lot cheaper than the yellow one, believe it or not, because the yellow one's like $63 as I'm recording this, and the black one right here is even 60 bucks. And plus, uh, Robert, the hobby man, he has a black one too. So this is the cheapest RDS model that I'm going to find at the moment because I was thinking about getting an XH data, but this is the last radio I want because... Um, I'm not going to spend $100 for a bigger radio. All right, I, I thought this through, guys. So that's going to conclude this video. And I'm really glad the test went very well with the Midland ER10VP, which that's going to be the radio I use for the weekly required from now on. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video.